Hello there. I am drawing this tiger. In fact, I was drawing this tiger in class for a good two hours yesterday. And I made the horrible mistake of not turning on my record. So for the benefit of those students and others, we had done a tiger's eye the week before. So all of our eyes should be done because we went over how to do the eyes and we started to demonstrate the fur. Now during the week I finished my fur on this tiger eye so I could move on to the other one. Um, but that's why I'm starting with the eyes done because we really had done the eyes before. Now the only thing that did get asked in the class was what about the parts where I can't see it? Well, if you can't see it in the picture, it's that dark and you wouldn't see it here. But I was saying that if you had a circle and you defined it by a C, that's not quite close, your eye would pretty much um, complete that. To be careful where I erase here because part of this is the lines for the for the tiger and the rest of it I will draw over. So in the skin around the eye if I have aimed this grayish part that you can see correctly then I pretty much know that it's ending up over here and then of course there's some highlights that match up and the circle of the eye, the dark around it, I can see that too. Um, this one actually comes up a little higher here. <clears throat> I am using a gray that has a bit of green to it. Uh, you'll notice that the tiger has a lot of green on the bottom, like the grass is reflecting up to him, just like the blue that I add to the highlight at the top because probably what's making that highlight in the eye is the sky. So there's often a blue cast above and a, a greenish one below. Uh, the first thing we did was we were marking off some of the, some of the markings, whether you're doing a, the tiger or the leopard, there are markings, but I don't want you to take an area and, oh, hi, I'm filling that shape in. You always have to be going the direction of the fur. Now, with that being said, we also had a discussion about what direction does the fur grow? Um, and you need to understand that on a cat. The, if you took the nose as a center, then everything grows up and out, away and out, down, and then eventually it gets into the body and it's going back or down the legs or back across the, the animal. But if you take this spot on the nose, on my cat, it's very well defined. My little cat, not, I don't have a big one, but there's a point about the center of the nose, maybe a little bit lower. And from there, you could draw a triangle to the sides of the nose. And everything within this triangle, and some may be along the side of it, is growing down. It's so such tiny fur, such short fur, really tiny, like a 32nd of an inch on my own personal domestic cat. It is even smaller. <clears throat> and then it kind of changes direction. You can see it's down the nose here, down, you know, starts going up in this area. It's up over the brow. But in this area, you know, we are, we do have some going down to the nose, especially in this triangular area, which if you could see a cat up close, it's pretty, it's a pretty large, it's a pretty triangular large area on the nose with a little bit like this will start to go down on the sides, change direction and then go out this way. So with that being said, when I am finding some of these dark marks to define, I have to be going the direction of the hair. These were going out 
This area I pretty much finished yesterday, these few inches to the side of the eye. Now the other thing is I'm using the sepia, the dark sepia pencil. Uh, you can use your dark umber as well, just a neutral brown. Uh, if you want to, you could use a warm dark gray, like 90% French gray. But I like the sepia the best. It's the most neutral of the browns. When you have a mistake, take it out right away. While we're still pretty light. You know, it's okay if some of your stripes aren't exactly, exactly the same shape as this guy, but you want to match it pretty well because um, a lot of these shapes are what defines the, um, the face because we're going the direction of the fur. There's my tiger meowing in the background. Anyway, you want to use this dark sepia because you want somewhere to go. Same as when I'm putting in this fur, I'm the light fur, I'm going to put it in as the cream color. Why? Because I need somewhere to go with this. Um, if you notice in the photo, the area where I am now over in the side here is not as white as this white. So this white may turn out to be my white pencil. I'm going to have to go white. But the reason I see individual hairs is because it's not all white. There's a shadowy area, etc. There are areas where it's turning orangey. So a good place to start is cream because I can always go to the white from there or have a few whites that stand out on there. This side is pretty white here. I may need to clean up the black first before I get it. But <clears throat> if I start out with white, I have nowhere to go. And a lot of times what our brain is telling us is white is not as white as you think it is. So down in this area, I'm even seeing the greenish that I was talking about having a good one to do, now you may want, not want to go straight into the green gray, uh, but ginger root. Ginger root is a good cream that has a little green base to it. So I could start with that. Now the pressure that I'm using on all of this right now is a medium to light pressure. And the reason for that is because we're going to do this subtraction method where it makes absolutely no sense to anyone why I would put down all of this and then take it all out until you do it and you see how realistic the fur looks afterwards. So I put some down and then I'm erasing away. Now my eraser marks are made with a sharpened eraser. I have sharpened that with an X-Acto blade. And then I brush them away. You can also use these fancy Mono Tombow Zero erasers. They work like a mechanical pencil and pump out. But my problem with them is that they are leaving a gummy mess on my picture that sometimes does not remove and stays there and dirties it up. So I don't want this, this dirt on there. Bringing that in even closer so you can see what I mean by dirt. It actually made little gummy marks in there and it's very hard to remove. So I just like a regular white latex eraser can clean it off by just running it off on the paper or slicing it off and I can get a sharp little point edge so I can use the edge or the point to erase back in. Now that I've erased back in and use a paper towel or a Swiffer or something to take your eraser bits off. I can come back and the pencil finds its way into those eraser groups. You will not feel them. You will not feel this, these marks with your finger running over it. It'll, it'll just seem ex extremely smooth, um, but they exist.
you'll notice that I go backwards and forwards because uh, the hair is, although it's growing this way and you get that point to your stroke, point that way, I also have the ones where the dark is going up in between the others. I exaggerated that to show you. So this dark point is going between the lights over here just as well as I would see the point of a stroke going the other way. So I laid down my darks and my lights again. I will also put in my areas where color's coming in. Um, I'm gonna make it a little more orangey, but I think the mineral orange is the best one. Mineral orange, burnt ochre, if you're using Prismacolors. And then I will come back and do the eraser again. I do my fur in layer upon layer. This way it looks more plush. I mean, if you, I just, I just went out and pet the neighbor's dog and he's like deep, deep velvet, like deep, deep plush carpet. If I could get that close to a tiger, same thing. This fur is not just one layer, it's deep layers of fur. And some of these strands will have more than one color even on one strand. I'm going to work a little bit into this colored area here and a little bit back into this shaded area here so you can really see the contrast that's going to appear. So we're a couple layers in. I'm going to do another one. And then remember direction, direction. So all of my strokes, whether pencil strokes or eraser strokes are the direction and the length. I can't erase a long eraser. They have to be the, the length of fur. And then come back and sometimes you wanna find your lights. Sometimes you want to find your shadows. The deeper colors. Go back to your dark markings, going both ways, into the light, out into the dark. I had something dirty there I wanted to remove. Then do your little marks. I use either the flat edge of this eraser or I'll use a, a corner point where I can really draw these in. I go through loads of these eraser tips. And as we get going, you'll get to a point where the fur starts to really look like fur. Remember this is rather medium pressure. 
This is not heavy, heavy, heavy pressure. Don't forget your shadowy areas. Now, after two or three times of doing this, you may have built up enough wax to use your slice tool, but usually not right away. I'm going to erase one more time the grooves we can't see. And remember, you can use an X-Acto blade for this, but be careful with the X-Acto blade. Um, it can cut a little deeper because it's sharper than you might be expecting. First, what I want to do is get these dark parts just a little bit darker. And by that, I mean now I think it's about time that I add actual black to them. I haven't been putting black or white down for this this guy. He's got some black markings in the fur. And then it looks more, um, the, the strokes are more defined when they're not a solid black, but a black that's mixed in with something lighter so that the actual black ones really stand out. Now the slice tool is used, and this is my favorite. There are several. And there's the pen cutter which I have found completely wobbly after changing the blade. Don't like that. There's this wonderful one that is so beautifully weighted to your hand, but it's got this tiny little scratcher that I used in the beginning and I'm not finding it does the trick now. I have switched over to using the craft knife one and I can't wait to try different shaped blades, but I'm using the rounded tip, same as we would use on the pen knife cutter. You want to use it upside down and direction of the fur. It is going to slice some of these little hairs right in half because you know my pencil tip can never be as thin as an actual piece of fur. If I did this with the If I did this with the X-Acto blade, which I have one here, somewhere, I had one right here so that we could do this. Um, I would have to be extremely careful not to cut the paper. Where did my X-Acto blade go? Um, guess I'm not supposed to do that. I might ruin my picture. But seriously, you want to use that X-Acto blade upside down. You can see the wax that comes off on the tip of this. See that little bit of wax? I'll do a little more dark so you can see it. See it? It's, it's actually scraping up some of the wax. And I want to do it in the white. Anywhere that I've built up enough. I haven't built up enough over here to do it. This side I have and maybe through here, through the shadowy area I have. Just the areas that I've been working on now while I've been chatting away here. Dust that off. I can now maybe come back a little stronger with some of the lights, whether they be white. I'm a 
applying just a slight bit more pressure or cream. As well as coming back with some of my darker colors. Sometimes I use a lighter pressure and let it find its way between the cracks. And sometimes I go ahead and um, use a heavier pressure. Usually the heavier pressure is with the extremes of the values. Like I want to use it on the really white white and I want to use a little more pressure with the really dark dark. But first find with a medium pressure that your pencil's finding its way into these strokes. And I can do it again. Since I'm not using an X-Acto blade, I can really kind of slice in if I feel like I need to do it again and give it another layer because this is a uh, nylon and ceramic blade and it will not damage the paper the same way that the um, X-Acto blade might. I don't have to be you know, the exacto blade I probably just do at the end and that's it. I'm finding a little more depth and detail in some of these colors. So I'm adding those golden tones that I'm seeing. Some of this will not make sense until you actually pick up your colored pencils and go that many layers of erasing and slicing and erasing and slicing. I mean, erasing and drawing and erasing and drawing and then slicing and drawing. And then you'll look at it and go, wow, that, that really looks like real fur. All right. Now I was gonna approach just a few other areas. The fur on the nose. The fur on the nose is short, 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 short. It is so short. You are gonna make almost like you're making little dots. So tiny, tiny, tiny marks, whatever the color is in whatever the area, it's lighter over here. And I'm gonna do the same method, but it's like I'm making little tiny dots. They are going the direction. They're not going up or sides or anything. They're coming down the nose like they're supposed to. And when I do my eraser marks, and when I eventually do my slice marks, I think I can do a few over here. Same thing, direction of the fur and tiny, tiny, tiny dots. I think you can almost see some of those dot marks that I'm making. So that when you come in with your pencil, you're going to get the impression of extremely short hair. Now the other thing we talked about was these wonderful whiskers and how to put them in. You kind of have to plan them from the beginning. We started to work on them and it is a matter of, they grow out of these little dark areas here. So these have to be placed properly. And what I like to do is I may mark them off with a pencil or with a little stroke or something. But what I really do is in between drawing I keep erasing them in. So now I haven't done as much on these whiskers as I have on a cat that I'm also working on. So I may pull that out and show you. I erase these back actually just to show you a little bit more. So I'll put some down and I make sure that I'm giving eraser sweeps not the whole length 
of the whisker, but from where they start so that I have the direction and whatever clear. Here's my other cat that I'm working on. And if you can see, I am not going to have 30,000 different uh, whiskers on it. It looks like a whole cascade of whiskers right now. But I have been erasing away as I go. You'll even get to a point where you may scrape away on some of them. Some people I've heard even use um, the Faber-Castell polychromos white which doesn't seem to let any other colors in. But I don't like my whiskers to be all white. What they are is they're kind of clear, kind of clear tubey things. So sometimes where they come out of is dark. And then along the side of them might be shadowed. And then down here might be in the shadow again. So the only true white, white, white part might be where they sort of bow out and catch the light maybe in the middle. That might be white. But if I make the whole thing white, they just look too thick and chunky. And, and even that, if that's too much, use your slice or even a um, fine hard pencil, FH, something like that, 2H. And that works as both a um, shadow to the whisker as well as, you know, helps define it, helps to shave the whiteness down. Be careful with that because the white, the graphite is more dusty than a colored pencil and it will um, darken your white if you've already put your white on. So now you see, I'm when I go in to work on all the fur in between those rows of dots and whatever's going on in the mouth and the chin, I'm actually working in between the whiskers that I've defined. Okay, so over here where I've got a billion tiger whiskers, you know, in the beginning, I haven't found where all of the whiskers are yet. And I'm just starting to put the first layer of fur in. But just remember, as I'm going in here and doing my erase and draw and erase and draw on the fur, make sure I've erased in where some of those prominent whiskers are coming out from. So that I don't have to find them after putting a black dot there. You know, this part down below is rather dark. Now I can work in between some of the lights that I'm putting in and do the negative spaces between those whiskers as I go in to put the dark that's around the mouth. Now the nose is, um, some of you have a pink nose, some of you have a um, dark nose. If you have a dark nose, you do the same as you would have the skin around the eye. For the um, lighter noses, use the peach color. It's really a flesh color. And do sort of ovally motion, keep it smooth. If you have a textured nose, you can make it more circular. Uh, some people are working on different pictures. And you can use like the clay rose and the sepia to define some of the dark areas. Your cream will work fine for some of the highlight areas. And then the flesh, sorry, it used to be called flesh. They changed it to peach, um, but the peach. And then his little freckles. If they're too prominent, you can do, you know, your your flesh color right over it. This is the clay rose running into the sepia because as you go down, 
to the bottom, it's going to end up with kind of a jagged stroke because it's coming out, the skin's going to come out into the fur area. And then you'll have your lighter fur working into it too. So you can end it in kind of a jaggedy stroke. At the top, we have the same thing. And remember the top is those very, very tiny strokes that are almost like dots. Watch out for where this changes direction as it goes out to the cheek. I'm going to go out this way. After the, after the line of the nose, I'm going out this way and then down. All right, and then the last area that is often a question mark to people is the ears. And the ear on a big cat is sort of teddy bear shaped, like a big velvet teddy bear ear. And the top of the head hair is gonna come up and be sort of long. We're going to go back over all of these areas, whatever area I'm talking about with fur, over and over and over. You see that I got about halfway through on this ear yesterday, but I'm still working on all those crazy little hairs in there. Um, but one thing we'll have to do, because we do have these crazy ear fluff hairs going across, is that as we're working on the shadowy areas in here and going back and forth and giving them lots and lots of layers. Remember my, my brain is telling me that this fur here is white, but it is so shadowy that I'm using that greenish shadow color. I can mix cream in. I mean, it can be a certain amount light, but it's pretty, pretty shadowy. And then I've got the direction of the outer hair. So we're going to be going back and forth with this erasing and drawing and erasing and drawing, but make sure that you do the, just like we did with the whiskers, some longer hairs for these hairs in between um, because eventually as you draw you're going to be drawing in between in between these hairs to create the look of the hairs that are in the ear. So I hope that helps you work on your tiger and those who are not working on a tiger grab a tiger picture and start working on a tiger or come join me in one of my classes go to www.leasearts.com and see what class i'm teaching next and maybe one of these lovely pictures will be yours one day and that is where I'm ending it for today. Thank you for having patience with me for not turning on the record button yesterday. Um, those who are in my tiger drawing class. Thank you. See you on Wednesday.